As you all know from personal experience, families, communities, and citizens across our country are currently dealing with the worst drug crisis in American history. Last year, we lost at least 64,000 Americans to overdoses. That's 175 lost American lives per day. That's seven lost lives per hour in our country. Drug overdoses are now the leading cause of unintentional death in the United States by far. More people are dying from drug overdoses today than from gun homicides and motor vehicles combined. Think of it. One word, opioids. The class of drugs that includes prescription painkillers like codeine, morphine, Vicodin, and Percocet, as well as illegal drugs like heroin. Opioids have been around for thousands of years, and they've been the gold standard medical treatment for pain since the Civil War. She was a promising young teacher with what appeared to be a great career ahead of her. Then she was arrested, accused of stealing laptops from her school and robbing a bank. And now Felicia Barbieri says heroin is what ruined her life. New at 5 and only on 11, Channel 11's Renee Kaminsky has her story. you have, what race you are, anybody can become addicted. Felicia Barberi knows she doesn't fit the public's image of a heroin addict, let alone a bank robber. But this former Catholic school teacher who went to jail for both believes getting caught saved her life. But in the 1990s, something changed. We saw in Dr. Phil that they had these um, these doctors in Florida where you could just go and they would prescribe you like a massive amount of painkillers even though you didn't really need them. Like it was kind of like a little, they had a loophole down there, something that made it really easy to get prescription drugs. It was a line I didn't want to cross but I ended up crossing it anyways and that's what happens with most people because prescription drugs and heroin like chemically they're pretty much the same thing, you know. Prescription drugs seem a lot safer but they're not. Good morning and welcome to Insys Therapeutics Operating Results Conference Call. I'll turn the call over to Insys CEO, Michael Babich. Took another puff and blew the smoke in my face, directly in my face, and said, petty rules from petty people, and uh, drove away. And it was kind of that final incident that basically said, no. I'm not going to do this forever. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to jump into the world of sales and business and try to make some money. Alec Berlikoff had spent close to six years in pharmaceutical sales. He would become central to the rise of Insys and its ultimate fall. This is the opportunity that of a lifetime I've been waiting for in my whole life. I've always wanted to work with a billionaire. patients. It was about getting as many people as you could on the drug. The instruction was go out there, show that we can get a minimum return on investment of two to one, minimum, and do not lose his money or get fired. And the only way that I knew how to do it uh, to get that guarantee is to bribe doctors. 
But in the 1990s, something changed. Pharmaceutical companies began actively promoting the use of opioids in the long-term treatment of chronic pain, based on the belief that patients were unlikely to become addicted. There's no question that our best, strongest pain medicines are the opioids, but these are the same drugs that have a reputation for causing addiction and other terrible things. Now, in fact, the rate of addiction amongst pain patients who are treated by doctors is much less than 1%. These prescription painkillers can be quite addictive. In fact, about 25% of people who are prescribed an opioid drug end up misusing it. And over 2 million Americans are now estimated to be addicted to these drugs.